Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, we are going to continue with our study of the great book of John with the seventh chapter in the very first verse. John chapter seven, verse one. It says, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. So Christ used wisdom. He knew that he had to accomplish certain things before he was to be offered up. And he also knew that the devil was going to move his people to try to kill him, to keep him from accomplishing what he came to accomplish. So we can learn a lot from the life of Jesus Christ. So Christ walked in Galilee. He didn't go all throughout Jewelry anymore because he knew the Jews were seeking to kill him. He was using caution as he traveled. The word jewelry, when we look up in the Strong's Concordance, it says the Judean land, that is Judea, a region of Palatine. So he stayed out of there because he knew the Jews wanted to kill him. Verse 2 says, Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Verse 3, His brethren, these are Christ's half-brothers, okay, not the ones who are his brothers in the faith, but these are his half-brothers because they had the same mother but not the same father. Jesus Christ was not born as a result of a man having sex with a woman. Joseph did not get Mary pregnant. The Holy Spirit got Mary pregnant. Anyway, his brothers therefore said to him, that word unto means to, depart from this place, that word hence, leave from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you do. Now, they weren't saying this as a sincere family that supported the Messiah, because they were not believers yet. They were, they were kind of jealous and envious of them, and <laughs> I hate to say it, they were suggesting something that might have got him killed. I'm pretty sure that they didn't want him dead, but what they were suggesting would have got him killed. So go on, don't just stay around here in Galilee. Go out and show everybody all these works that you do. Verse 4, he says, for there is no man that does anything in secret. Now, I'm translating the archaic words as I read to help you learn the modern-day English equivalent of those words. That's why I'm reading it that way. Instead of saying, do if, uh, for there is no man that does anything in secret. And he himself seeks, not seeketh, seeks to be known openly. If thou or you, if you do these things, show yourself to the world. So he's like, hey, you around here in Galilee doing these miracles and things. I mean, most people, if they had that power to perform all these miracles, they want everybody to know about it. So go on out there, man. Don't just stay here. This is what they're telling them. Verse 5. 
for neither did his brothers believe in him. This is his biological brothers. Had the same mother, not the same father. So they weren't believers at this time. Later on they were converted, but at this time they weren't believers. So they, yeah, go out there, man. Go, go show everybody what you can do. Verse 6, then Jesus said to them, My time is not yet come. But your time is always ready. He said, hey, it's not time for me to die. So I'm not going to do what you're suggesting. He said, your time is always ready. You could die at any time. It doesn't matter because you're not down here doing what God said anyway. <laughs> you're just out here lost. He said, it's not my time yet. I got something to accomplish. Verse 7. He says, the world cannot hate you. The world can't hate you. But me it hates, because I testify, the word testify means to bear witness. I bear witness of it, that the works thereof, or the works of it, are evil. So Jesus said, the world doesn't hate you, because you are part of the world. Like I said, they weren't converted at this time. He said, but the world hates me, because I point out the evil of the world. And that's true of any believer who's around today. If you are truly a Christian walking in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and you point out the evil of this world to unsaved people, they're going to hate you because you condemn them every time you come in the room. So Jesus said, you're one of them, I'm not one of them. Verse 8, he says, go ye up unto this feast. Or he said, you go up to the feast of tabernacles. I go not up yet, notice he said yet, to this feast. It's not time for me to go up there right now. For my time is not yet full come. So Christ said, hey, it's not time for me to go up there right now. You go up to the Feast of Tabernacle. Verse 9, when he had said these words to them, he abode. That means he remained still in Galilee. So he said, y'all go ahead. And he stayed there. Verse 10. But when his brethren were going up, when his brothers left, then went he also up to the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. So he said, I'm not going with them, because they don't know uh, that I am the Messiah, even though they see me doing all these miracles and things. They got this little petty jealousy going on and envy. Uh, there's something we can learn from that. When you know people don't have your best interest at heart or they don't understand you, it's best that you don't be too closely associated with them. So he said, no. Y'all go, and as soon as they left, he went, as it were, in secret. Verse, that was verse 10, verse 11 says, Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? They were looking for him. There was a whole bunch of Jews who said they were going to kill him because... The devil had filled their heart with jealousy and envy. He was still in their thunder. Everybody was talking about Jesus. And he was doing things they couldn't do. <laughs> anyway, verse 12 says, And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said he is a good man. Others said nay, which means no, but he deceives the people. And that's the way it's going to be even today with us Christians. You're going to have people who the Lord will bring in contact with you and whose heart he is open to receive the gospel. And they're going to think, speak good of you. And then there's the people in the world who are lost who are going to accuse you of being a deceiver. All right? I know I've had people accuse me of being a deceiver. Anyway, verse 13, it says, How be it no man spake openly of him for the fear of the Jew. The word how be it means but. But no man spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. So the Jews had everybody intimidated, even the ones who believed. They wouldn't talk about Jesus in a positive way. A lot of them wouldn't when they were around. So they talked among themselves. They say, he's a good man. Oh, yeah, he's a good man. And then, you know, some of the locals said, nah, he's a deceiver. Verse 14, now about the midst of the feast, around the middle of the feast of Tabernacle. Jesus went up into the temple and taught. So he came in there at that specific time. 15. And the Jews marveled. They wondered. 
saying, how know if this man letter? How does this man know the Hebrew letters, having never learned? Like, man, this guy is sharp. How does he know? Uh, did, did any of y'all see him go to the school and get taught by the rabbis? No? Then how does he know? As far as we know, he's, he's a carpenter's son. He's a carpenter. 16, and Jesus answered them. He told them how I knew and said, my doctrine is not mine. It's not mine, but his that sent me. God gave me my doctrine, okay? So he told them. 17, he says, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, or he will know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So if any of you are truly servants of the Most High God, he's going to reveal that I am the Messiah, and you will know. See, it's very important that we understand when you see people that don't believe, it's because they don't have God's Holy Spirit. These things are spiritually discerned. So if you're sitting out there watching this video as a believer, don't think because you're smart and you're sharp that you, know, that you just get it. Uh -uh. It's the Holy Spirit of God who's revealing it to you. And, and that's a seal of God's approval that you are one of his. Verse 18. Jesus said, he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. Or he that speaks of himself speaks, seeks his own glory. And that's true. You got a lot of these so-called preachers around here blowing their own horn today. Reverend this and bishop that and so-and-so. You know, it's all about them. <laughs> It's not about God like they claim they're supposed to represent God. He that speaks of himself seeks his own glory, but he that seeks his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Very important, saints. If you truly are a servant of God, it's not about you. It's all about him. To God be the glory. So when people try to praise me, I, I quickly correct them, and I take those praises that they want to give to me and I throw them up to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because I'm just a tool in the Master's hand. So Christ said this is how you know if a person's truly a servant of God when they're humble and they're representing the greatest of all time. Okay? 19. Did not Moses give you the law and yet none of you keeps the law? Why go you about to kill me? So he said to these deceived Jews who wanted them dead, he said, didn't Moses give you the law? <laughs> the law talks all about me. In other words, you just don't understand it. And he says, but none of you keep it. You're not keeping the law because you want to kill me. One of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not kill. But yet you're plotting on how you're going to kill me. 20, the people answered and said, you have a demon. You know, thou has a devil. They accused him of having a demon. You have a demon. Who goes about to kill you? Ain't nobody trying to kill you. They didn't realize who they were talking to, that you can't hide anything from God Almighty, which is Christ Jesus, along with the Father and the Holy Spirit. All three are God Almighty, and you can't hide anything from God. 21, Jesus answered and said to them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel, you all wonder. He said, I've only done one work since I've been here, since I've started preaching and started spreading the gospel. And you're all wondering. 22, he says, Moses therefore gave to you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And you, and you on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. Listen now. 23, he says, if a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? You see, I want you to think about how you're reasoning. He says in verse 24, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Now, this is important. There's a lot of people to this day who don't understand what you can and cannot do on the Sabbath day. Here's Christ saying, there are exceptions. So I got a Bible study that shows 
from scripture that you can do a lot of things on the Sabbath. You know, people believe it's this rigid restraint that you just can't do nothing. You just have to sit still. No, it's not that way. You can do good on the Sabbath. So Christ did a good thing on the Sabbath by healing that man. That's why he says, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So you could, there's a lot of things you can do on the Sabbath. All right? 25. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? So there were some that came from Jerusalem that recognized that he was the Messiah. He said, Is, isn't this the one they want to kill? 26. But lo, uh, but behold, he speaks boldly. That's him right there. They want to kill him. And he's standing here speaking boldly. And they say nothing to him. Ain't nobody saying nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Do they not understand that this is the Messiah that they are plotting and planning to kill? 27. How be it? Which means but. But we know this man whence he is. But when Christ comes, no man knows whence he is. Now, that word whence, when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it simply means from what place he comes from. So they say, but we know this man from what place he comes from. And when Christ comes, nobody knows from what place he is from. So, you know, they were confused because they didn't understand the scripture concerning Christ. That yes, he would be born in Bethlehem of Judea, but he would not grow up there. Anyway, verse 28. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, You both know me, and you know from what place I am. And I am not come up myself, but he that sent me is true, whom you know not. 29. But I know him. For I am from him, and he has sent me. So Christ got frustrated a lot of times with these people. And that's why it says he cried out loud. Verse 30, then they sought to take him. They got mad again. <laughs> but no man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come. Now that's very important, that God is always in control. Jesus came into the world to die for us. To redeem us from the fall. But nothing could happen to him until it was time for him to be offered up. Verse 31. And many of the people believed on him and said, when Christ comes, will he do more miracles than these which this man has done? See, they were looking at the miracles, the blind receiving their sight and the deaf receiving their hearing and the dumb being allowed to speak and the lame being able to stand and walk and all these tremendous miracles he was doing. They couldn't deny that. And they knew the scripture prophesied that the Messiah would perform all these miracles. That's why they said, when the Christ comes, will he do more than this man does? Christ did so many miracles that the Bible tells us in this book of John later on that if everything was recorded there wouldn't be enough books in the world to contain them. So he did a lot of miracles all the time. A lot of them were not recorded in scripture. So that's why they like, this got to be him. Verse 32, the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. So remember what I said? They, they were jealous of him, and he was still in the thunder. And I mean, we got to do something about this. Verse 33, then said Jesus to them, yet a little while am I with you, and then I go to him that sent me. He says, I know what you're plotting and planning. He said, I'm just going to be here for a short period of time, then I'm going back up to heaven with my father. Verse 34, he says, you will seek me, ye shall seek me, you will seek me and shall not find me. You will not find me, and where I am, Thither ye cannot come. And where I am, there you cannot come. So he said, y'all not going to be able to come where I'm about to go. Verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither 
will he go that we shall not find him? Where will he go that we will not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Or will he go to the dispersed? That's the tribes of Israel that were scattered among the Gentiles, the non-Jewish nations, and teach the Gentiles. Verse 36. What manner of saying is this that he says, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, or you will seek me and will not find me, and where I am thither ye cannot come, and where I am ye, you cannot come. What is he talking about? They did not understand. Remember what I said? These things are spiritually discerned. 37. Listen. In the last day, that great day of the feast, the last day of the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. 38. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now when he said what he said, he was quoting the scripture, but he meant that the Holy Spirit had not been poured out in a major way yet. He wasn't talking about literal water flowing out of somebody's belly. So that's why it says, but, he, but this spoke he of the Spirit, which they believe on him should receive, the spirit that they were going to receive at Pentecost. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now that's important because when Christ was glorified, he was done with his work on the earth. And now the Holy Spirit was coming to indwell every last one of us and complete that work. So when Christ tagged out, the Spirit of God tagged in. You can understand that. So every last one of us now has God, the Holy Spirit, in us. Every believer. Guiding and directing us. And he doesn't make us do anything. He's there to help us. We can quench the Spirit. We can grieve the Spirit. And we can resist the Spirit to our own detriment. Because if we don't yield to the Holy Spirit and allow him to mold us and make us into the type of people we're supposed to be, we're not going to be saved. Anyway, verse 40 says, Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. So they said, Man, he quoting from the Old Testament. He got to be the prophet. Some people are like that even to this day. If somebody just says something from the scripture, they say, Oh, man, he got, oh, he got to really be the man of God because he quoted scripture. That's not necessarily always true, but it was of Christ. 41 says, others said, this is the Christ. This is the Messiah. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Remember, a lot of them did not understand that Christ was born in Bethlehem of Judea, but he grew up in Galilee. They didn't know that. That's why they said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? 42, has not the scriptures said that Christ comes of the seed of David out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. So they knew what Micah chapter 5 verse 2 said about Christ being born in Bethlehem. They knew the scriptures that said he was going to be the descendant of David, come through that line. But they didn't understand that he was going to grow up in Galilee. Verse 43 says, so there was a division among the people because of him. Some believed, some didn't. 44, and some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Some of those officers that the chief priests had sent want to lay hands on him, but God was holding them back. They looked at the crowd and like, maybe this ain't a good idea. <laughs> maybe, maybe we better not touch it. Verse 45, then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said to him, why have you not brought him? What's going on? We sent y'all down there to get him, to shut him up, and arrest him, bring him here, and stop him. How come y'all didn't get him? 46, the officers answered, never man spake like 
this man or never have we heard a man speak like this. So the Spirit even allowed them to know that there was something different about Christ because he didn't teach as if, uh, one of the scribes and Pharisees. He taught as one having authority, the Bible tells us in Matthew, because he has the authority. He was Emmanuel, God with us. So they couldn't touch him. Like I said, until God allowed it. 47, then answered them the Pharisees, are ye also deceived? So the Pharisees said to those soldiers, Are you deceived too? <laughs> 48. Have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed on him? Have you seen any of us believing on him? So in other words, you must be looking up to us. If we don't do it, you're not supposed to do it. <laughs> 49. But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed, so now they're going to insult him. These officers were Roman soldiers. He said, you, you, you don't even know the law. You're cursed. 50. Nicodemus said to them, He that came to Jesus by night being one of them. Now he was a Pharisee who God was working on his heart to reveal to him that Jesus really was the Messiah. But Nicodemus would meet him at night, so he was undercover. They didn't know that he met with Christ and that he was a believer. So that's why he said to them, verse 51, Does our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he does? So he's speaking up for Jesus on the sneak tip. He was afraid to just come out and say, Hey, I believe that he is the Messiah. I met with him, I talked with him, and, I, and the Lord has revealed to me that he is <laughs> the Messiah. So he, he's going to try to put it out there gently. 52. They answered and said to him, they said to Nicodemus, Are thou also of Galilee? Or aren't you also from Galilee? So they insulted him, in other words. You're just saying that because you're from Galilee, like he, like he is. Search and look, for out of Galilee arise ariseth or arises no prophet. So they said, you'll go back and study the Bible. You will not find anywhere in the scripture where it says that Jesus, who the Messiah, would come out of Galilee. You're not going to find it. 53. And every man went to his own house. And so, my brothers and sisters, I thank you for studying with me. And we're going to continue to do this great book of John one chapter at a time. So I'll see you in the next Bible study. God bless you. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions, or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, 
you can email me bartonaaronporter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. It's godwear.store. So please check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.